Uh, it's nice to be here, so thank you for the organizi organizers to organize French Kit. It's nice to see some people and some uh, faces uh, instead of a, a Zoom background or a webcam. Um, so today, my goal is to make a small overview of uh, what it is to build iOS and uh, macOS app with Kotlin Native, or more exactly, to use Kotlin Native inside an iOS or macOS app. So I'm not going to do a full deep dive in Kotlin Native, uh, this will take us way too far, but I'm going to do that, uh, this small overview, in 10 minutes and 10 slides, if everything goes well. A uh, few words about myself, so I'm Martin, I'm, uh, you can find me on Twitter, I work for a company named Apollo that does uh, everything GraphQL. Uh, if you're using uh, GraphQL on iOS, you might have heard of my colleague Ellen Shapiro, I know she's quite active in the community. Uh, I'm, she's working on Apollo iOS, I'm working on the Android side on the Apollo Android SDK. And earlier this year, uh, we added support for iOS and macOS to Apollo Android. I know it sounds a bit weird, but uh, with Kotlin Native, you can now run Apollo Android on macOS and iOS. I'm also a big Hearthstone player, so uh, I play um, since 2014, I, I think, and I made a lot of contribution to this... Uh, can I point something here? No. Well, to the repo called HS Tracker, which is a companion app for uh, Hearthstone. Uh, if you play the game, uh, you might have heard of a new mode called Battlegrounds and everything. Uh, I added the support for Battlegrounds using Kotlin Native. But enough about me, a uh, few words about Kotlin. I'm assuming you all know Kotlin at this point. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is that Kotlin is named after a small island in the Baltic Sea. Uh, which is very close to St. Petersburg, and this comes for a very big, very good reason, is that St. Petersburg is the hometown of JetBrains. JetBrains is a company that makes uh, IntelliJ, uh, Sea Lion, uh, WebStorm, a lot of IDs. They've been looking for a replacement for Java for a while, and they decided, since nothing was really working for them, they decided to make their own language, and since Java was named after a big island in Indonesia, or at least that's one explanation, they decided to name Kotlin after a small island in Russia, which I think it kind of makes sense, and it's this small island there. So if you look at Kotlin, you will have all the features you expect from a modern language, stuff like type inference, uh, optionals, uh, functional types, and so on, and so on. And actually, it's more or less the same features of Swift. So if you know how to write Swift, chances are that you more or less know how to write Kotlin. Um, so this is a small class that I'm going to reuse throughout the presentation. Uh, it's a simple class, takes one string as input and returns hello with uh, this string. It showcases a, a few of the language features. You can see it's really similar, only the guard thing is a, is a bit different, but won't go too much into that. So, since the languages are, are, are so similar, JetBrains was like, what if we take this Kotlin on the right side and use that on iOS and macOS? And to do that, they make use of the Kotlin compiler. So if you're on Android, things are easy. You take your Kotlin file, you get a Java, GVM, class file, easy things. Uh, on native, uh, they patch the Kotlin compiler to output LLVM intermediate representation, which they feed to LLVM, which generates machine codes, which then goes back to Kotlin and outputs a nice framework. So this is cool. Uh, there's nothing magical. It really works uh, together with Objective-C. And if you go inside the framework, you will see something like this. So it's a bit verbose, but this is the header file for our French kit class. And it's annotated with uh, a lot of stuff to make it easier to call from Swift. And we are very happy about that because we wouldn't want to call Objective-C from Swift. And in the end, it's working, to be honest, it's working quite well. Um, since the language have more or less the same feature, you can use the same things so classes, uh, obviously interfaces map to protocols. 
uh, all the primitive types uh, map really well, uh, the collection, list, uh, dictionaries, arrays. Everything works well. You can even uh, define function types in Kotlin and have them in Swift. Uh, extension functions work as well. So for the most part, it's working well. You saw me coming, there are a few exceptions. Uh, stuff like value types and structs that you have in Swift, they don't exist in Kotlin, so obviously you cannot map that. And on the other hand, uh, you can have stuff like uh, sealed classes, inline classes in Kotlin. They have no equivalent in Swift, so no luck for that. But back to our framework, the goal is to take our Kotlin framework and use that in an iOS or macOS app, because really this is what people do today. They take the Kotlin framework and they do all the business logic. So there are very, very few people trying to write user interface in Kotlin because there are so many platform um, specificities that it doesn't really make sense. You want the best UI for Android and you want the best UI for iOS. So what people do is that put their business logic in Kotlin and at some point they want to import that framework inside Xcode. And for that, you have more or less two solutions. First one is you make a huge monorepo and a custom build phase that will rebuild your framework every time you change something. Uh, the other solution, which is a bit more automated, but is more or less the same in the end, is that um, Kotlin uh, has a Cocoa Pods plugin that you can use. It will generate a pod spec for you that you can then use in, uh, in your Xcode workspace. Sorry. So this is all working well with a few caveats. Uh, the first one is that uh, it requires a, a GVM installed on your machine. Uh, not everybody wants a GVM. Second one is that compilation is super, super slow. So for the Hearthstone Companion app, HS Tracker that I mentioned earlier, it's 10K lines of Kotlin, more or less. And changing one line, so I'm just not talking about compilation from scratch, but just incremental compilation, if you change one line, uh, it's going to take something like one big minute to link uh, the framework again. So iteration is very slow, and this is a, a bit painful. You, something I, I, I really interested and curious about is uh, actually hosting compiled binaries. Uh, of course, it brings other challenges like what formats do you store and how do you do versioning, but I think that might be a solution. But anyways, once you integrate your framework and you put everything in Xcode, it's working well. And uh, it's working surprisingly well. Uh, this is a Swift UI, a simple, very simple app using our French kit class. Um, well, I have not much else to say. Uh, you can call the class, uh, you can call it from Swift UI from, from wherever you want, and you can even debug that. So debugging goes through some kind of hoops. You cannot simply put a breakpoint uh, by clicking. You have to type a, a bit of LLDB. There is a bit of ceremony involved, but if you put your breakpoints, um, since Kotlin native leverages LLVM, the uh, debug symbols are in dwarf format and are recognized by Xcode itself. So Xcode can open the Kotlin file and uh, you can dump the values of the variables if you want to. If you want more visual stuff, um, you can also use Android Studio to run iOS app. That sounds weird as well. This is uh, the new shiny KMM plugin from JetBrains. Uh, this was released a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it's already broken since uh, Xcode 12 was released. Um, so yeah, this is really typically the kind of things that you will encounter as you do Kotlin native, like um, yeah, stuff that is not always uh, advancing at the same pace in the two ecosystems. I have one last slide which is the last but not the least, um, which is a bit the, yeah, the elephant in the room. Um, and I didn't know really how to put it because this can take us really far. But on one side, you have a, a GVM a language, which is garbage collected. On the other hand, you have Objective-C and Swift, which use IRC. 
And the JetBrains team, they try to do something as easy to use as possible. So they try to use IRC together with cycle detection so that users don't have to manage memory by themselves. This, this is cool, but it, it puts a lot of constraints of other constraints like uh, basically as soon as you do multi-threading, you have to make sure uh, all your variables are immutable. So you have to call freeze on each and every variable. And this freeze will freeze all the graph, so all the references referenced by your variable. So this is really, really super painful. There's a lot of uh, messages, a lot of talks about this. Like Touch Labs, a company that is really big on Kotlin Native, they do a whole presentation about this. Uh, so this has created a lot of frustration and the JetBrains team um, somehow reacted to that by saying that they're going to change everything. Uh, they didn't say how or when, but you can expect this constraint to be removed in the future. Uh, so conclusion, um, don't I really have a conclusion. The ecosystem is definitely growing. I like to say that uh, learning by sample is the best. So I put a few samples there of actual uh, open source apps using Kotlin in production. So this is good uh, to, to start experimenting with. A uh, few more resources, resources that I'm not spending too much time on it because I will share the, the slide afterwards. And if you have any question, you have my Twitter. So thank you all for bearing with me for these 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the courage. Uh, actually, it's. Uh, the very first uh, well, developer who uh, has the courage to talk about Kotlin and to uh, came out of a conference alive. Uh, so um, I, will, um, I think somebody will wait you uh, at the bottom and the ground floor, <laughs> but that's another subject. So uh, um, let's start with the questions from the audience, maybe this, this time. If there's somebody, yes. I reformulate for the for the camera. Uh, what's the interest of um, of JetBrains to support uh, to bring this language? So obviously, I cannot speak for JetBrains, uh, but my best guess uh, is that they want to sell IDs. They sell IDs, so the more people use the IDs, maybe people can use app code more. I don't know. Uh, so this is how they make money, and they want as many people as possible using Kotlin. I guess. I uh, anybody know? Um, I have a question. Actually, uh, I, I've been uh, quite interested about Kotlin uh, native for for the last years, and uh, like uh, well, last month I uh, I received the notification saying that uh, um, Kotlin multi-platform mobile has been released, and so I told myself oh, I should le learn everything again. And then I read this site and didn't understand what they are doing with that. So can you explain what's the difference between KMM and uh, and just call it native. Yeah, it's a really marketing uh, at this point. Um, KMM is just. Uh, I, mean, I, I think officially KMM is an Android Studio plugin mm -hmm. that allows you to run and debug iOS app. And so when they release that, they made a, a lot of documentation and material uh, to rebrand everything under the. Um, I don't know, under the name KMM, but I think for, for the most part it's marketing because it reuses Kotlin Native uh, behind the scenes. Okay. And Kotlin Native has been there since, I think, 2007 or 2008. So, it's, yeah, it's not really new. The language uh, evolves. Yeah, um, is it going to stay? Like, uh, as you said, like, it's, it's uh, kind of a... A new, uh, not so new language, but it's not. Uh, I mean, it's not been uh, developed by Google. Or it's it's been developed by an IDE provider. So it's kind of a, a weird uh, choice, a weird bet, isn't it? Like kind of uh, uh, risky to say, okay, I'm going to do my app with this technology, uh, and like maybe uh, in some years or months, uh, it could stop. What do you think? So is it strong? So Will yeah, it stay? Just my point of view, but I think it's there to stay, at, just for Android. Uh, Kotlin is going nowhere uh, 
just due to Android. And then Kotlin native, so if, the, yeah, if it's about Kotlin native, then uh, some people are starting to ship uh, actual apps with it. I'm uh, thinking about Square and the Cash App app. So Square is a company uh, that is really invested in uh, multi-platform and Kotlin native. So yeah, it's really confusing because multi-platform, KMM, and Kotlin native, it's different ways to more or less talk about the same thing. Uh, but we see some people, some companies starting doing it. So. Yeah, because when you when you start uh, betting on on uh, I don't know React uh, JS, you're you're thinking, okay, is it going to be a, a, a parent solution? Will it stay for long? But you know that uh, Facebook uh, mm. write a lot of things uh, on this technology, so it's going to last. But uh, for Kotlin, it's kind of a bit different. Do you know if JetBrains is actually using that for some of their projects? So JetBrains is actually using it. Uh, they released something that's called uh, JetBrains Space. Uh, it's, uh, have you heard about it? No. Maybe. Um, it's a competitor to uh, Jira, uh, GitHub, um, GitHub Actions. Uh, so it does everything, uh, like there has messaging, uh, CI. Uh, it's their own solution that they use internally to develop Kotlin. And they're using Kotlin Native there, so they are dog fooding their product. Uh, okay. yeah. Very interesting. Uh, questions? Uh, no. Um, we didn't. Uh, when we saw the comparison uh, between Swift and um, no, sorry, between uh, uh, the um, what uh, Kotlin supports and what actually is converted back to Swift, uh, we didn't see generics. Are generics uh, supported? So generics are supported, kind of. I didn't put it honestly because I'm not 100% clear of all the little details uh, about generics, like uh, covariance and uh, contravariance and stuff. So for the general case, uh, it's working and it's enabled by default in Kotlin 1.4, which was released uh, one month ago. Uh, then you cannot have something like generic functions. This, this does not work. But as long as you stay in the general case of having one class with a generic type, th this works well. Okay. Even for custom classes, not only for uh, arrays? Yeah, for a, a, any kind of class, this, nice. this works well. Uh, this was under a compiler flag for some time, and now it's enabled by default. Cool. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you.